Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience lately as I've been tweaking the configuration hyperparameters for Unity ML Agents. I've been able to get significantly better performance on my training, meaning the amount of time it takes to train my agents to behave the way I want them to behave just by changing a few values. And so I thought it'd be really valuable to just talk about that at a high level, just a little bit, so you get an idea of how big of a difference it can make. I did my experiments with the pyramids scene. So this is a scene that comes as an example with the Unity ML Agents project on the Git repo. And basically the task is for this little blue cube dude to uh, explore the environment, find that switch, turn it from orange to green, and then find this orange pyramid that's spawned when the switch is hit, knock it over, and then hit the block that's on top. So it's basically an exploration task. It uses ray casts to uh, sort of shoot out and look and see if it finds anything, which is actually really similar to the project that I've been working on for the plain uh, ML agent course that I'm in the process of creating. So that's why I was particularly interested in this example. And so what I did was I wanted to see if I could figure out how to improve the training time of this project. So the default parameters for training the pyramids project are under trainer config.yaml. That's in the config folder under ML agents uh, in the ML agents directory. And these were the default values, so I have them commented out here. So it was the batch size, the buffer size, the hidden units, and the num epoch. So uh, how did I pick these values to tweak? Um, so the first one I, I wanted to experiment with was this hidden units. So first of all, the uh, 512 number just means that you have two layers of 512 neurons. So that's a fairly complex neural network compared to some of the other ones in this project. Um, I think the default is quite a bit less. Um, Striker Learning uses 256. Looks like Big Wall Jumper Learning uses 256. Um, I wasn't sure if this would help or not, so I decided to experiment with it. This was the first one I did, and I found that while it took the same amount of time to train, which was surprising to me, I thought it would take less time to train just because it was a less complex neural network, um, it still worked just fine. So I figure a simpler brain probably is fine and might ultimately be more performant at inference time. So I left that as is. Then I wanted to know what numbers to change. And the best way that I recommend that you do this um, is go to the training PPO uh, page on the ML agents repo under docs training ppo.md. They have a really helpful guide, which includes best practices for uh, training or tuning the hyperparameters, and they explain all the different things that are in these files. So um, you can read through them and try to get a better idea of what they are. But what I ultimately did was as I was reading through these, something jumped out to me, and it was the number of epochs. So basically, it all right, I'll just read it. Num epoch is the number of passes through the experience buffer during gradient descent. The larger the batch size, the larger it is acceptable to make this. Decreasing this will ensure more stable updates at the cost of slower learning. So this was the thing that jumped out at me. At the cost of slower learning. So decreasing it means slower learning. And the default number was 3. And it looks like most of these use 3. So my thinking was, well, how do I increase this number then? If I increase it, will it make it faster learning? So I then noticed that it said the larger the batch size, the larger it is acceptable to make this. So I was like, all right, well, let's crank up that batch size so we can crank up the typical range or within this typical range still, but keep um, the number of epochs higher. And so um, I just sort of followed the guidance here and then it says something about how it has to be a fraction of the buffer size. So I decided to increase the buffer size as well. And I didn't do this all at once. I did gradual increases just to see um, 
what where the sweet spot was. And ultimately, these were the numbers that worked particularly well. So a batch size of 512, a buffer size of 4096, and then a num epoch of 8. So it's going through the experience buffer eight times. That's my understanding of how this works. So just to show this again, uh, it works just as well as if you train it with the original hyperparameters. Let's see if he'll uh, behave for us this time. I was watching him earlier, and he never ended up finding the pyramid. He just kind of went in circles for a while. So it's not always perfect. But you can see that the results are quite good. It's, it's solving the puzzle um, without too much trouble. Now, to sort of compare these, uh, the best way I've found is to use TensorBoard. And TensorBoard shows you what the, in this case, the top graph is the cumulative reward over time. So this is the average reward that the agents are getting. Average meaning there's actually 16 of these environments kind of stacked on top of each other, um, training simultaneously. So, you know, it starts off and it's pretty slow, um, but after a certain amount of time, so around, we'll say 55 minutes, you can see in that black box beneath my cursor, uh, the relative time on the far right, 55 minutes of training, then it starts to really pick up and it gets to the top, we'll say around an hour and a half, an hour and 30 minutes. So that was just with the default parameters. Now, when I changed it and when I used my new parameters, this red line, this is the results I got. These are the results I got. So you can see that it starts to really pick up around 15 minutes. So 15 minutes versus 55 minutes is crazy. And then you look at where it tops out. Um, comparatively, we've got 45 minutes compared to an hour and a half. So it's cutting the time in half to train and getting similar results, if not the same results. So that's kind of the point I wanted to make with this video. I don't think it's gonna be valuable for me to bore you with all the details of all the hyperparameters, but I just wanted to show you that if your training is going slow, then it might be worth investigating these different hyperparameters. And in fact, if your training seems to just be stagnating and not going anywhere at all, then it could be that your hyperparameters could be tuned to make it so that your training works a lot better. So that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video and show you um, what can be done there. I think that this is going to help uh, in the course that I'm working on uh, for the airplanes. If you haven't seen the airplanes, definitely check out the other videos on my channel. I've um, I've actually, I guess, just posted one video about the actual planes flying around. If you want to learn how I did it, um, then stay tuned for the course that I'm working on. That should be out fairly soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought. If you have any feedback for me, I always appreciate that. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.